What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. This is Robbie and Neela, and today we're talking about the best large cap value ETFs. So I finished my series on the best sector ETFs and I think it actually did pretty well. I think a lot of you really enjoyed that series and someone commented somewhere, uh, maybe I'll try to find it and uh, throw it in here for a second. Someone said something about like doing a series on the next like large cap ETFs and then maybe mid cap, maybe small cap or whatnot. So what to th we're doing today is our first video, the best large cap value ETFs, but this is part of a large cap value series. So I'm gonna go through large cap value today. Another video I'll go through large cap growth, large cap blend, maybe even large cap momentum. So we're gonna do a whole series on just large cap ETFs now and it'll be sprinkled in through my other videos coming up. So hopefully you like this series. Let me know in the comments again if you do like this. So I hope you do. And so let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, so I wanna give my opinion first on some thoughts I have about the large cap value style of investing. So uh, basically, in general, I think that value stocks are gonna have a better year finally this year. I've thought that before in the past, and so far I've been wrong every year that I've thought that. So I wanna show you what I'm looking at here first is something from Morningstar. And so what this is showing us is value stocks and how they've done versus growth stocks recently. This heat map goes all the way back into 1999. So we can see some pretty decent historical data here and how the different large cap value, for example, on the top here performed versus growth. So just for an example, so you know, back in 1999, large cap value stocks underperformed large cap growth by negative 30%. Let's fast forward to 2020, and again, large cap value underperformed large cap growth by 32.15. And actually, if you go down, you can see how mid cap did, how large, small cap value did. So all the different styles, large, mid, small, did really bad in 2020 versus growth. So growth was a huge time period for pretty much any investment style. So if you invest in growth over value, pretty much you're always, in the past few years, we're going to outperform. Now, if we go back and look at the last time value actually ended up doing well, so we'd have to go back to 2016. And in that year, value did outperform growth uh, in large caps, because we're talking about large cap value today, 11.4% uh, better. So that's the last time that this happened. So it was a few years ago. But what I want you to kind of understand is that this isn't very normal. So if you look back all the way, you know, multiple years here, there are years where value stocks definitely do better than growth. If you look at the 10 years on the top here, there's a lot more green than there is in the bottom 10 years. So what I'm saying is there comes a time where value is going to have to end up doing well, at least have a couple good years. And I think this might be one of those years that that happens. So that's my two cents within what I think is going on in this style. Let's go ahead and get into the kind of meat of this and let's start comparing some different ETFs against each other. So let's go ahead and go over the different ETFs that we have today. So the first one is FVAL, which is the Fidelity Value Factor ETF. We have JVAL, JP Morgan US Value Factor ETF. We have the DSTL, which is the Distillate US Fundamental Stability and Value ETF. We have VOOV. Vanguard S&P 500 Value Index Fund ETF shares, and then we have SCHV, the Schwab US Large Cap Value ETF. Starting off, we're gonna take a look at the expense ratios, probably one of the most important things. So uh, we have a FVAL with 0.29%, JVAL is 0.12%, DSTL is 0.39%, VOOV 10.10%, and SCHV 0.04%. So SCHV, the lowest expense here, and then the highest is DSTL. And so let's kind of move down and take a look at the fundamentals real quick. So price to earnings ratios for these, uh, the highest is DSTL. So they're investing in maybe a little bit more expensive companies based on earnings. Then you have FVAL with 15.1 to so the least. So maybe this is more value in my opinion. It's a lower price to earnings ratio. Let's take a price to book into consideration because that's an important one too for a lot of value investors. So three for FVAL, so yeah, that's pretty, 
decent low book. JVAL is lower, 2.6. DSTL is the highest again with 4.4. Uh, DVAL or DSTL actually has uh, the highest of most of these ratios. And now we're talking about value ETF. So of course yields are gonna play a factor in this because a lot of value companies pay dividends. And so let's take a look at the yields of these different ETFs. So FL, we have a 1.41%. JVAL, 1.88%. DSTL, just a one, so a lower yield. VOOV, higher, SCHV, highest yield. So if you're a yield investor, you're probably not gonna love DSTL as much as maybe you would like an SCHV or a uh, JVAL or a VOOV. So take that into consideration. Let's move on to take a look at some of the uh, performances, the price performances. So this is a comparison of the returns of these different ETFs, and this actually goes back to around January of 2018. As you can see, uh, Distill here, DSTL is the highest return, 87.71%. Then down here, uh, under 60% is FVAL, JVAL, SPYB, and VOOV with the trailing least gained ETF. And then if we take a look here, I would like to see just how the uh, S&P 500 fared in this. So let's go with VOO. That'll be S&P 500. So the S&P 500 did around 70.86%. So it does seem that DSTL did outperform the S&P 500 over this time period. FVAL was the next up and it, it still underperformed the S&P 500. Now, there is not a lot of companies or not a lot of ETFs that probably did better than the S&P 500 over this time period because as you saw, value didn't have a good time period over this time period. So you wouldn't have really expected to beat the S&P 500, but you did with this DSTL ETF. Now, what I wanna do is look into the portfolio and see why that is, because maybe something that happened back in the past during a certain environment economically and in the stock market may change going forward. So let's take that into consideration and try to like I don't know, think this through and think if this actually will still outperform going forward. So for the sector weightings, I don't wanna really go through all of this, but you know, pause the video and take a look here if you want to. Uh, I would just say that most of these do have, or these three at least have, decent information technology exposures, which is something you wouldn't think would happen with a value ETF. And so this brings the next question, which is will these strategies actually work going forward? Because as we know, tech killed it for many years and right now tech's not doing so well and i don't know if it will do well this year but if you watch my sector calls video i don't think tech's gonna be the best sector this year so that begs the question of did these etfs really do well because of the past stock market conditions or is it really because they're the best right so this is this one's kind of hard for me to figure out. Let's take a look at the top 10 holdings to kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So FVAL's top holding is Apple. So is JVAL's. And so like, is Apple really a value stock? And I mean, I, I wouldn't really necessarily consider Apple a value stock. It's been around a while. It's a proven stock, but it sells for a pretty high PE ratio compared to other stocks that are also inside the S&P 500. So, there's a lot of reasons why I don't necessarily think these will do as well this year as maybe they've done the past three years. And to show you this kind of like in a very short term time period, so you know, might not necessarily be able to extrapolate this out, but I think that this does start painting a picture for us. So this is a one month chart of what's happened recently. And as you can see, the S&P 500 has lost 7.42%. So it's a volatile time, growth stocks are getting killed value stocks are doing better. And take a guess which of these ETFs have done best. So SPYV actually has done the best, which was not on the list that I just showed you, but VOOV is coming up second here in with a negative 2.22%. I actually realized SCHV isn't here, so let me throw that on there. And so here you can see SCHV is negative 3.56%. And this is kind of like the picture I'm trying to paint here. So I do think that going forward, this is gonna have a similar trajectory. I think that large cap value stocks probably aren't gonna do as well as value. And I think that these other companies, the JVALs, the FVALs, the DSTLs, are kind of weighting these uh, metrics that are favoring kind of more growth type value stocks. I don't necessarily think that's gonna work this year. 
So even though the returns were good in the past, I don't think they're gonna be as good this year. I'm actually realizing something as I'm going through this. I took off SPYV when I was kind of thinking this through, and I'm realizing I think I should be including that. So quickly, SPYV, let me show you what's going on. So SPYV is the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 Value ETF. The top holdings are companies like Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson Johnson, Procter & Gamble, ExxonMobil, Chevron. It's not investing strictly in like these kind of uh, fake value stocks, you might say, like Apple. Going down, you could see it's a bit more weighted towards energy, which you might know from my videos that I think is gonna be a good sector this year. It's also got a bit more in uh, consumer staples than a couple of the other ones, which I also think is probably gonna be a decent sector this year, and financials as well, pretty heavily weighted there. So in terms of the giant, large, and mid, there's actually no small cap here, so that's good if you're really looking for a strict large cap only ETF, but there is some mid cap with 24%. So actually, but still comparatively speaking, one of the highest or largest cap type ETFs in this so far. And if we go down and take a look at the expense ratios, you'll see it's only 0.04% for SPYV. So it's really a cheap ETF. It's tied for the cheapest with SCHV. It's got a distribution yield of 2.10, so it's actually got a higher distribution yield than all the other ones I showed you. And so I think what the answer is, is SPYV is going to be the ETF I'm gonna pick as my best ETF for large cap value. So let's quickly take a look at the chart. So we're looking at the chart right now, going back to about the start of 2020. Uh, let's throw on some uh, trend lines here. So it looks like SPYV has been in an uptrend channel and it's continuing to be inside this channel going back from about May of 2020 until today. Now it is getting very close to breaking down through this channel. It's it's gonna it's consolidating a little bit right now, really close to the uh, uptrend line. So we're gonna see if that thing ends up breaking down through it. If it does, the question is, where does it go from there? So I see some support here in the 37.38 area. Let's see what type of decline that would be if it does da break down through that. So if it does break down through this uptrend line, it could go down to about 37.61, which would be about a 6.47% decline. So what I would do for an entry point, if I cared about an entry, I would wait to see if this thing breaks down through it. I would take a look at this level and see if it does have a bounce. Also, I would just see if it does start bouncing up off of this. It could still be a good buy if it stays within this uptrend line. Right now, I don't have any problems like y'all are cost averaging this thing. It's in an uptrend line right now. And like I said, I think this is a good ETF to own for this year. So no problem if someone doesn't want to do technical analysis and try to actually find an entry point to this ETF. I think MACD might be starting to look pretty decent. The MACD line's kind of turning back up maybe towards the signal line coming in soon. And then we have a RSI that's looking pretty good too. Not quite oversold, but probably pretty low. So it has potential to definitely come up here into the higher levels. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. I didn't think I was gonna pick this ETF, but as I was going through it, that's the one that ended up shining to me. So let me know what you think. Hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully you learned something. And if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe, see future content like this and other videos coming up on the end screen. Please click that right now.